It's time now for the press review with Alison Sargent. Good to see you, Alison. You too, Delano. You're starting out in China, where the papers there are hailing a major pledge uh, to support biodiversity. Yeah, as we read on the front page of the China Daily, uh, China has launched a $233 million biodiversity fund. President Xi Jinping made this announcement at phase one of the UN's COP15 Biodiversity Summit, which China is hosting this week ahead, of course, of the COP26 climate conference that will be held in Glasgow next month. The Global Times explains that China's $233 million pledge will support biodiversity protection in development developing countries. The paper also writes that it comes at a critical time of mapping out the world's biodiversity targets and will help the world better achieve those targets. While Chinese papers are hailing the China's Chinese government's uh, contribution to biodiversity protections, though, the UK's Guardian newspaper warns that China is planning to build more coal plants. The paper explains that Beijing had set out ambitious plans to be carbon neutral by 2060, but those plans seem to be changing in the face of an energy crisis that has seen nationwide blackouts in China. Mm. To help combat those, China has hinted it's rethinking that timetable of being carbon neutral and is reportedly boosting its coal production. Securing a global agreement to phase out coal, though, is one of the UK's goals at that upcoming COP26 summit in Glasgow. And The Guardian writes that China's cycling back on its coal policy is a big blow to achieving that goal. We'll see what comes out of the COP26. Uh, moving next to France, where papers are looking into the horrific death of three migrants who were hit by a train. Yeah, this happened in the southwest of France, not far from the border with Spain. A local paper, Sudwest, headlines another tragedy in Basque country. Uh, another tragedy because the paper tells us that altogether six migrants have actually been killed in the area in just the past six months. Uh, all of them were people who had come to Spain from Africa and then were traveling over to France and to reach the rest of Europe and the UK. Uh, we read in Le Parisien that the four men were lying on the tracks when the train hit them. The conductor and other staff managed to save one who was badly injured. The three others were killed. Now, why were they lying on the tracks? Well, French authorities say they believe the migrants may have been sleeping uh, since they didn't move to get out of the way when the train came, uh, and it was the first train to arrive that day. Now, migrants looking to reach the UK do often end up in Cal Calais, the northern city of in France, and in Le Monde, we read that two volunteers and a priest have started a hunger strike in support of migrants there. Uh, they're calling for evacuations to be put on hold during the winter months, and they're also wanting to open a dialogue with authorities about the conditions in Calais. Uh, Le Monde writes, almost five years to the day since the Calais migrant camp was dismantled, the city has fallen into an eternal pattern. The same bottleneck of people seeking to get to England, the same deplorable living conditions and the same dead-end dialogue between authorities and aid groups. Wow, it's really sad, isn't it? Now, uh, this next story is about an anonymous group of Google and Amazon employees that is calling on that are calling on their companies to end a project with the Israeli military. Tell us more. Yeah, they've published an open letter in The Guardian today. Uh, they're calling on Google and Amazon to pull out of Project Nimbus, which provides cloud services to the Israeli military and government. Uh, which in part help with surveillance of Palestinians. They write, quote, we cannot look the other way as the products we build are used to deny Palestinians their basic rights, force Palestinians out of their homes, and attack Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. Altogether, 90 employees at Google and 300 employees at Amazon have signed this letter internally. Meanwhile, uh, Delano, the Irish novelist, Sally Rooney, has also been making headlines with her stance on Israel. As we read in Haaretz, she's refusing to give the translation rights for her latest novel to any Israeli publisher that, quote, does not distance itself from apartheid. The left-wing Israeli paper Haaretz doesn't comment on Rooney's stance, uh, but they knew, do note that her previous novels have been translated into Hebrew and that she said that she'd be honored to have the new one translated as well, but under the conditions that she outlined. Okay.
Now, uh, we began the press review with biodiversity and we're going to end in the animal kingdom with a look at some of the winners of this year's Wildlife Photography Awards. Yeah, these awards are given out by Britain's Natural History Museum. We can start with the one that I find the most horrifying. Uh, this is a photo of a Brazilian wandering spider and her brood of eggs. It That's was taken... Huge. It's huge. So, so it looks huge, but actually uh, this photo was taken under his bed where he saw the spider by Gil Wizen, uh, the photographer though um, his amazing use of perspective oh, okay. makes it look like it's actually filling up the entire room in part because those are actually spider babies um, next to her, the spider which make her look huge although these spiders from Brazil actually are very huge <laughs> in real life although not quite as big as covering an entire wall um, I don't want to leave you with only a frightening sight so we can also take a look at this year's grand prize winner this one is an underwater photo of camouflage grouper fish mating so swirling around them there is a cloud of eggs and sperm. Uh, this one was taken by French photographer Laurent Ballesta. Uh, he and his team spent five years returning to the same lagoon in French Polynesia uh, to catch these fish in the act, which apparently is not easy since mating season only happens uh, for a brief period each year around the full moon in July, which sounds pretty romantic for the fish. <laughs> um, and then, Delano, I can leave you with one last one, which I think is one of my favorites. It's uh, a photo of a mountain gorilla having a moment of peace in the rain. Uh, this photo it was called Reflection. It was taken in Uganda by Kuwaiti photographer Majed Ali, and it won the top prize in the animal portraits category. And I can say it almost feels like it's a human portrait as well. It's wonderful. Thank you very much for that, Alison. Alison Sargent there with today's press.